Hi everyone, um, we're going to finish our discussion on photosynthesis. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up the light reactions and then talking about the Calvin cycle. Okay, so the major question is, what is really the purpose of the light reactions? Um, and we're really trying to create NADPH and ATP. Creating those two things is a main purpose of the light reactions. But how do we do that? How do we get from excited electrons on the chlorophyll, which we talked about earlier, and get the excited electrons to create NADPH and ATP? Um, this is a, just a schematic diagram that shows um, the two photosystems that are working together to do those two things, creating ATP and NADPH. So you can see we start off with the light reaction, the light over here. The light hits the pigments on, to, on the photosystem number two. Um, it keeps on going down, the energy is transferred until finally it hits chlorophyll A, which excites the electron and hits the uh, primary electron acceptor on photosystem 2. Um, and now that electron is going to continue on, um, but just to remind you, when, when the electron continues on, water replaces the electron that was lost on that first chlorophyll A on photosystem 2. And when water gets oxidized, releases the electron and refills this chlorophyll A, um, the water gets converted into oxygen. So that's what happens first. Now this electron continues down an electron transport chain. Very, very similar to, um, and very similar in concept to electron transport chain we saw in cellular respiration. So here it's just going down from protein to protein, and as you can imagine, same idea, as it does that, it generates enough energy for protons to move from, right here is the stroma, it moves from the stroma inside the chloroplast and pushes the protons inside this uh, thylakoid space. So this thylakoid space is very high in proton concentration. It's similar in function to the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. So the protons are getting pushed in here, and as the electron is moving and the protons go here, they can actually exit the ATP synthase, and it creates ATP the same way that ATP synthase worked for um, cellular respiration. So ultimately, ATP was created through the electron transport chain and uh, chemiosmosis, so oxidative phosphorylation ultimately. So now this electron keeps on going, and finally, it's going to hit, um, it's going to replenish the chlorophyll on photosystem two, or so photosystem one, I'm sorry. So what happens is light, same idea as photosystem two, light here energizes these pigments, and as the energy gets transferred from pigment to pigment, it excites this uh, the, pro the electron on this chlorophyll, A, and that electron hits the um, primary electron acceptor on photosystem 1. And the same idea, here it loses an electron, so that electron is replenished from the electron that we got from photosystem 2. So remember, photosystem 2, we got that electron replenished from H2O. Now for photosystem 1, we got that electron from just photosystem 2. And so finally, we're almost at the end here. That last electron can uh, go to this protein, which reduces NADP plus to NADPH, which is the electron carrier for photosynthesis. And so um, we ultimately, this NADP plus is the final electron acceptor, and it forms NADPH by being reduced. Um, these two products, NADPH and ATP, are what's going to leave and go into the Calvin cycle. Um, this right here is just a more zoomed in picture to kind of see what's happening. Um, we already described the process, but you can tell like the photon energy, it hits this, um, this chlorophyll here, electron gets excited, replenished by H2O, the electron travels down the electron transport chain, pumps protons in, forms ATP through the ATP synthase. Um, the electron replenishes this chlorophyll here, um, but remember the energy, it gets hit by another photon to have the energy for this electron to get excited. And then ultimately, that electron reduces NADP plus to form NADPH. Um, these next couple slides are just a verbal summary of what we just discussed. So if you want to, um, we just talked about all of this. And you can pause the slide and write down these in your notes. This is how photosystem 2 receives the light energy. Next is the electron transport chain, where the electron is moving from photosystem 2 to photosystem, photosystem 1. And then finally, electron, uh, the photosystem 1 receives that electron and continues to eventually form NADPH. Um, this is just a summary of formation of NADPH. Uh, we talked about how it's the final electron acceptor. Uh, sorry, NADP plus is the final electron acceptor to form NADPH. That's the result of NADP plus receiving the electron. 
And then in terms of ATP, um, it's the same exact process uh, in concept as what we saw in the oxidative phosphorylation. Um, it's using proton gradient generated by electron flow and um, eventually forming ATP. This is the new term called photophosphorylation. That's the word we're going to use to call this formation of ATP, um, where we're using ultimately light energy to form ATP. So before an oxidative phosphorylation, we use the oxidation of electron carriers to form ATP. That's where the electrons came from. Here, that electron is ultimately coming from, uh, the, it's the energy of that electron is coming from light. The electron itself is kind of coming from water, but uh, the energy is coming from light. Okay, we're going to talk about the Calvin cycle, which is now the second part of photosynthesis. Um, the input for a Calvin cycle is CO2. CO2, carbon dioxide, is our ca carbon source to ultimately form this sugar compound called G3P, which is an intermediate for glycolysis. And you can go from G3P and go backwards and form glucose. So we're going to just go through all the steps of Calvin cycle. We start off with RuBP. This is the starting material that's inside the cycle, and it will form with CO2. And our first step is carbon fixation. That's when the CO2 um, combines with the RuBP, the starting material, and um, it forms this compound right here. So these two form together. That's the first step, carbon fixation. Next, in the reduction phase, this new compound that was formed is going to be reduced by NADPH that was formed in the light reaction. And it's also going to be um, phosphorylated and get its energy from ATP. So we're using the two products from the light reactions in step two of the Calvin cycle um, to do the Calvin cycle. So this is reduction. The next stage is, um, the next step right here is the release of G3P. So G3P is a three carbon sugar. That means that we need three carbon dioxides to go into the cycle for us to form this G3P. So three carbons are coming in. Um, we go through carbon fixation and reduction, and then finally we release what we want, which is G3P. Next, um, after we release that, we want to regenerate our starting material, which is RuBP. So um, the next step, say, step four, is just the regeneration of RuBP. And you're going to use some ATPs to be able to do that. Um, just in summary, uh, for the net synthesis of one G3P, the Calvin cycle consumes nine ATPs and six NADPHs and three carbon dioxides. So those are all the inputs needed for one G3P. And remember, you need two G3Ps to form one glucose. The easy way to remember is that G3P is a three carbon sugar and glucose is a six carbon sugar. So you need two three carbon sugars to form glucose. Uh, finally, you, you should know that G3P doesn't just form glucose. It can form glucose, but it can also form other organic compounds. So that is a summary of pretty much all photosynthesis. Um, thanks so much for watching.